Hey guys, Uncle Ray. Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. On this channel, we cut through the hype and the noise and we give you the non-biased information you can use to make informed decisions. Well guys, I got some good news and I got some bad news for you. But in the end, it's going to all work out for everyone that understands this and makes good decisions in my opinion, in the future of crypto. I can't be more bullish. But what I said in my thumbnail about the BlackRock ETF coming to reality is not clickbait. And it is not 100%, but guys, you can read the writing on the wall, and it's about 99% guaranteed. Because right now, guys, if you do the deep dives like I do, you, you will uncover that the blueprint of like the governments and Wall Street and the legacy banks, everything they're starting to do and have been doing that just hasn't made any sense and we thought they were just trying to kill crypto. Oh no, guys. They're not here to kill crypto. They're here to pump crypto to the moon. But that's after they dominate it. So whether we like it or not, the, the banking rails, the DeFi, the custodial, the staking, the metaverse, pretty much everything, guys, unfortunately, is going to be dominated by the same players like BlackRock and the Goldman Sachs of the world and the governments as they do now. But, hey, the good news is, if you're watching this channel, you're aware of that. And we're going to front run it if I have anything to do with it. Now, this is not financial advice, but guys, my intent is to capitalize on what's coming down the pipe. And in my opinion, it's the biggest opportunity in history. I've never seen anything like it, and that's why I started my channel. So guys, I'm not here to shill anything. I'm not here to throw FUD, but... Guys, I just want to tell you the non-biased, uh, non factual information and give you both sides of the story. Because I see, one thing I see that wreck people, guys, they just get misinformation. You have all these influencers and you have these news organizations telling you one side of the story. And no one's talking about the legacy banks and the governments and BlackRock and and all these corporations they don't talk about what they're doing to not be disrupted and guys unfortunately there is no disruption coming they're going to use this technology to make leaps and bounds of the dominance that they have now whether we like it or not but the good news is guys wherever they throw their money hopefully we're going to put our money there first that's my plan but how do I say that that ETF is coming with so much certainty? That's what this video is about. So it's good news, guys, because we're aware and we're going to hopefully be able to capitalize on what's coming down the pipe. I can't be more bullish. Let's get into it. Now, if you don't know, basically BlackRock applied for an ETF. That's what pumped Bitcoin last week. And Fidelity... And ARK Investor, I think there's uh, like 21 ETFs trying to apply. I don't remember the number, but it's a large number. And guys, when that happens, you're going to have all the power players of the world. You're going to have the JP Morgans, Goldman Sachs, uh, BlackRock, all these hedge funds, all the wealthy per people on the planet that have large portfolios, they're all already wanting to be in crypto, especially Bitcoin. But it's too risky for them. It's not regulated. And they do do not want to learn the technology and open a wallet and have decentralized, you know, issues where if they mess up, they lose their money. But guys, it's unbelievable the adoption that's going to come down the pipe. If we just get one to five percent of all the money on Wall Street in these hedge funds and like BlackRock, it's going to be mind blowing. Now, here's why I say that there will be 
an ETF. It is not if, it's just a matter of when. Now, my guess is BlackRock and, and Wall Street want to crash Bitcoin and pick it up cheap. I could be wrong. They got a plan to take over everything. So why would you want to start stacking $50 you know, uh, Bitcoin if you can stack $15,000 or less Bitcoin? Hopefully that's going to happen because I'm going to get me more Bitcoin. Anyway, uh, the main reason I, I've always thought that there, there has to be an ETF, because if you think about it, guys, derivatives and future contracts are based on the spot price. How do you have a derivative that is it derives from the spot, right? So it's an oxymoron that how, how you possibly didn't get a spot ETF first is beyond me. But that being said, the reason I say this with so much certainty is they have showed their cards. And I was watching a podcast with uh, Michael Saylor. And I, he brought something to my attention that I wasn't aware of. And guys, like I tell everyone, don't listen to me, but listen to the people I listen to. Because I tell all my friends, like at a cocktail party, if, if Michael Saylor walked into that cocktail party, a billionaire that went to MIT and founded one of the most powerful companies in the world, told you to go buy a Bitcoin, you wouldn't pass go, you'd go do it. But if Uncle Ray tells them, they're like, ah, oh, what do you know? So guys, I get my information from people that are a lot smarter to me for, than me. Anyway, Michael Saylor was saying that the reason they denied the BlackRock ETF was that when they put in, I think it was Coinbase as the custodial, they said, well, hey, they, they have all the levels and that's a conflict of interest. That's too risky. So... What they're going to do is come back and separate like the spot uh, ETF where, you know, from the, I guess the order desk, from the custodian, from the retail. Um, well, guess what just happened, guys? And this is why I'm so positive. This is why you can just put the puzzle together. The puzzle's halfway done, guys. They got a long way to go from taking over crypto and, 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 and everything else, but it's on the wall. Check this out, guys. You got Swab, Fidelity, Citadel, all together who just created a exchange, EDX. And guys, that's an institutional exchange. We'll be lucky, guys, if we're going to be able to stake our own money in a decentralized platform. Because no matter what, this is what the future is going to look like. Now, we may have another option and be able to stake like we do now, but fast forward a couple of years, the bulk of all the money on the planet is going to be staked through like Wall Street and through the banks. Let's just say you have a, an account at Goldman Sachs. They're going to call you up and say, hey, We've got a spot ETF, or do you want to own your own ETF? Whatever, you need to diversify 5% of your portfolio. You'll say, hey, get it done. No different than buying Tesla. And they'll go, okay, we're using this custodial company, and we're going to buy it through EDX, which no one cares. They're just going to buy it for you. They're going to insure it. They're going to put it in custody for you. They're going to manage it just like they do all your stocks or your mutual funds. It's going to be easy, but it's going to go through their rails. But guys, the next time that they resubmit, they're probably going to have everything covered because they took away the only issue that the SEC has. Now, if they happen to kick it back again, guys, in my opinion, it's just buying time. Just like with the Ripple SEC court case, Yes, it may have been about Ripple doing something wrong. It may have been a little bit about that. But guys, they had disrupted technology. They had disrupted technology. So they got slowed down by the legacy banks. And they, they weaponized the SEC. And they're going to buy as much time as they need. They've already you know, moved so far down the road with the technology and their roadmap. The disruptive technology of... XRP and the XRP Ledger and Ripple 
guys, they're not disrupting anything anymore. That's over. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but believe me, if you if you do your own homework, like I talk to people every day when I work one on one with customers, I'm like, how many times have you went to Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan's website? Well, then why would you deny that I don't know what I'm talking about? And I say that with love to everyone, but guys, before you think that the disruptors are going to disrupt all these legacy banks, wouldn't you like to know? Don't you think you should know what technology and roadmap they have? We read the white papers of everything I buy. Well, I've read the white papers and and I've read the roadmaps of all the, not all the legacy banks, but the bulk of them. And guys, it's ugly. It breaks my heart. I thought we we're going to have decentralized utopia, but we're not, guys. They're going to control everything. They already control. Not only are they already out front, like with cross-border payments and everything else, tokenizing assets and the flow of money in general, guys, it's going to be 10x the control and the dominance and the and the market share that these legacy banks and Wall Street's going to get. It's going to blow your mind. And a lot, I mean, a lot of the utility projects that we know and love, they don't have a chance and they're going to disappear. They're going to get gobbled up and just cloned and they're not going to have any market share to speak of. They may make enough money and get enough of the share to survive, but guys, you need to be cautious and have a full understanding of what's coming down the pipe. But this right here, guys, it's a no-brainer. They are setting it up. Consensus just uh, opened up their MetaMask institutional uh, program for staking, right? Guys, it's all coming. Wall Street's going to be staking. They're going to stake for us. Like, I'm a little older than probably most people watching this channel, but back in the day, you throw your money in the bank. They paid you 3 4 5 15% way back in the day. Well, that's what they're going to do in the future. They're going to stake your Bitcoin for you. Maybe they offer you 5%, 7%. 15%, I don't know, but then they'll be staking it, making 15, 20, 50, 100%, who knows? They'll still have liquidity pools and all that, but the big boys will be making most of the money, and just like they do with your interest rates, when you park your money in the bank now, they put it to work for them, not for you. They're going to do the same thing with your crypto. Now, if we're lucky, we'll be able to do it independently, decentralized if we're smart enough and if you want to but I promise you they're trying to take that away it's just like with IPOs you have to be an accredited investor guys there's never been I worked for Bear Stearns on Wall Street we bought brought companies public there's never been a safer better investment outside of crypto than bringing a company public. It's a no-brainer. It's almost impossible to lose money, but they tell us for our benefit and our safety, if you're not an accredited investor of, you know, a million dollar net or $2.5 million net worth and a million dollar a year, whatever it is now, we, we want to keep you out of that game. Well, they're going to try to do the exact same thing in crypto. Hopefully they fail. But anyway, guys, the new power player on the block, you can write this down, it's going to be EDX Exchange because Citadel and the big power players on Wall Street are, are part of it. And then you got BlackRock, a part of Coinbase. They're going to probably get the retail side and some of the institutional. I mean, there's no 100% dominance of any of these players, but they are going to get the lion's share of everything. But anyway... I know I'm rambling on, but guys, here's the good news. I want to tell you my thoughts of when Bitcoin and crypto is going to moon and maybe change your life like you never even thought about. Now, this is just my thesis, but I know it's going to happen. In my opinion, it's not when or it's not if, it's just when. But when you want to know when we're really talking moon, and it may not happen in the next bull run, but let's think about something. If we get regulation where it's legal and there's no ramifications for everyone to invest, whether it's Wall Street or me and you, we get some regulation. Imagine that growth it's going to bring in. But then we get a spot ETF 
which is basically going to allow like a mutual fund for the sheep of the world. All that money coming in. We got tokenized assets, which that's going to be a little further down the line, but that's going to be mind-blowingly explosive. Then we're going to get a Fed pivot. And, we're, and the Fed's going to start printing money again, and interest rates are starting to grow down. Now, the other variable, we get a new president in the White House. And I'm not being political, but we have not done one positive thing <laughs> with this administration. And hopefully the next administration, you're going to see this economy, the American economy, which has fallen way back across the world, and we're losing you know, everything to like bricks and all that. We're going to put a stop to that, mark my words. Anyway, when all that comes together, that bull run, whether it's this bull run or the one after, wow, it's going to be so explosive, it's going to blow your mind. When when people like Kathy, at, uh, I can't think of her last name, at ARK Investments, she talk, Kathy Woods, when she talks about a million dollar, Bitcoin, guys, she's a world she's a world beater. She knows what she's talking about. She's not joking. She's on CNN. She's a power player. And when she talks about million dollar XRP by 2030, I believe, or maybe 2027, yeah, 2027, I believe, she's calling for a million dollar Bitcoin. Guys, it's very doable. I mean, Bitcoin's easily going to take out the market cap of gold. I mean, easily. In my opinion, that's ten, twelve trillion dollars, and I think we're going to be changing gears. And when that when that bull run happens, you might have your your projects like Bitcoin and Ethereum with and a quant with good tokenomics, the ones with real good tokenomics, and they're fully diluted. Those might might not come back. They may rocket and pull back maybe twenty percent and start acting more like a stock. Now, the other projects that are not fully diluted and have bad inflation inflation and stuff and bad tokenomics, they're still going to crash. But hopefully, when they get fully diluted, eventually, and we're talking 10 plus years, guys, crypto will start acting more like gold and more like the stock market or definitely more like at least the commodity market. It'll be volatile, but it won't be doing, you know, massive pumps and pull back, you know, 90% it had pulled back, you know, 20%, 30%, 35% would be massive. That's the future, guys. Anyway, I can't be more bullish. But guys, be careful which projects you stack. Do your own research. Don't listen to all this hyped up lies that we get from everyone. Go straight to the source. And guys, for instance, if you own the banking tokens like I do, I own every one of them, do yourself a favor. Go to JP Morgan's website and look at their blockchain projects. Go to JP Morgan. Go to Bank of America. See what they're doing because it will blow your mind because we hear this stuff all the time. The banks are doing this. The banks are doing that. Well, it sounds sexy and it sounds great until you compare it to like a JP Morgan. You're like, wow, all that news is this big compared to the news coming out of JP Morgan, for instance, and Goldman Sachs. And just like this exchange, no one's talking about this exchange. No one. I just found it luckily. This is the exchange, guys. This is going to be like the New York Stock Exchange. You don't think it matters? It matters, guys. And guess who's involved? The big power players that we all hate. But that's the way it is, guys. That's the way it is. Anyway, guys, subscribe to this channel. I'm going to keep you informed whether you want to hear it or not. We're going to give you both sides of the puzzle. That way, hey, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to take it at heart. But at least I put in a little bug in your ear playing the devil's advocate sometime. But guys, I don't send FUD. I send truth and information that you can use. I'm non-biased. I will sell my entire bag tomorrow and buy a new up-and-coming token. Whatever if something changes. Like I said, I'm here for the money. Hopefully, you're here for the money. So don't be tribal, guys. Open up your mind. I say that with love. Get as much information as you can because if the majority were right, the majority would be rich. And the majority are not going to make money in crypto, which that's the good news for the people that are informed and have a strategy, right? You have a strategy in place to take profits and capitalize like I do 
like I try to help people in my coaching. We plan on winning. Now, this is not financial advice, and we may not win, but the good news about crypto guys and in all investment investments, 90% of all everyone that's ever invested in anything in the history of man, 90% lose money. That's why the 10% can change their life. Pay attention, guys. I can't be more bullish. That's all I got for you. Hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comment section. The ETF, EF, whatever, it's coming, guys. I'll put my reputation on it. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. And we've got a lot of positive stuff coming. Again, can't be more excited. Can't be more bullish. But, hey, we got to weather a lot of storms between now and the next bull run. But get a game plan, guys, and come back and be part of this community. Take care.